1984 film adaptation of Dune is widely perceived to be a failure. Say what you want about the movie, but I think its incredible production design is as jaw-dropping today as it was 35 years ago. Ravel produced a series of models licensed from the film, including this truly unique flying machine, the Ornithopter. In this video, I'm going to show you how over a two-year period between 2017 and 2019, I built the Ornithopter with a fully detailed and lighted interior and mounted it on a custom diorama base with figures. It's the first in this vintage build series, coming up next on Scale Icons. In the Vintage Build series, I fire up my time machine to create short videos showing you how I built some of my favorite models years before I started this channel. Today, it's part one of my Dune Ornithopter build. As I explored in a previous video, Ravel released a series of model kits in early 1985 licensed from the big budget adaptation of Dune. But when that movie tanked at the box office, the models disappeared very quickly. I'll include a link to that video in the description. It's worth checking out if you haven't seen it yet. Dune kits are very rare but I was lucky enough to stumble on this one in the dealer room at the 2015 IPMS Ottawa Capcon show. Buying the kit was only the first step for me. It was followed closely by the inevitable hunt for reference material and any aftermarket parts I could find to improve it. Easier said than done for the most part because there's almost nothing, and I mean nothing, out there for the Ornithopter. That meant any details would need to be scratch built, and since this model features large windows looking into a massive open space where a cockpit should be, I knew I had my work cut out for me. My biggest goal was to replicate the flickering green cockpit lighting described in the novel and depicted in the film. But first, if you like videos about scale models and all the things that inspire designers to dream them up, manufacturers to produce them, and hobbyists of all ages to build them, remember to subscribe to this channel and click that notification bell icon so you won't miss a single video. So one thing I learned through my research, there is an almost universal complaint from other modelers about the fragility of the styrene plastic used by Ravel. It may have yielded crisp details, but it was extremely difficult to work with. Whether this was an issue in 1985 or simply a result of the plastic aging for three decades, it meant I'd have to be extra careful with the parts. The kit had been out of production for over 30 years, so it's not like I was going to be ordering any extra replacements from Ravel. With research complete, I was off to the races, starting with the construction of a variety of sub-assemblies, as well as coming up with a plan for that massive interior space that simply cried out for detail. There's very few image references for the interior, and those that exist are mostly grainy image captures along with what's visible in the film itself. There isn't much to go on, but it's clear that while the kit generally matches the rough layout, it's missing a couple of key features, such as these bulkheads and doors that seem to separate the cockpit into three compartments, and the detail on the aft wall. For the bulkheads, I drew up some designs that replicated what was barely visible in the movie. However, I used a pinch of artistic license to modify the design to suit my needs. This included a triangular cutout in the upper portion of each bulkhead that would give the pilot visibility to the left and right through those big bug eye windows. But really, this was just an attempt to maximize visibility of detail that I was planning to add. For the rear wall, I dipped into my spare parts box and created more of an impressionistic representation of the on-screen design. For something that was only visible for a few seconds in a movie that was three decades old, I didn't think anyone would notice the difference. It's close enough, and it looks a lot better than the bare walls the kit comes with. Now for the instrument panel. Because I wanted to light the instruments, I needed to find a way to hide the LEDs, the wiring, and the fiber optics I'd be using. However, the kit's control panel is a simple flat table that really just sticks out from the wall. There's no clear images of this part of the ship in the film, nor have I been able to find any stills that illustrate how it was designed and constructed. So, relying on that artistic license again, I fabricated an enclosed bulkhead below the panel that would give some support to it, while at the same time, a convenient place to hide all those wires. I also dressed up the forward interior wall with some plastic sheet styrene to give it some visual appeal. With the new bulkheads and an instrument panel in place, it looked like a reasonable, if not entirely accurate, recreation of the original. On to the landing gear. The front pods were fairly simple affairs that really didn't need a lot of detail. 
just a few small pieces from my spares box and some stretched sprue to dress them up. However, it was a different story for the rear legs. The kit parts are fairly plain, and the blueprints don't offer much inside either. So I added a few bits of styrene and some bits from my spares box to really emphasize both the industrial nature as well as the insect-like appearance of the design. The final capper was the addition of a few ballpoint pen springs because, well, they looked cool. As far as screen accuracy goes, the landing gear was never even seen or filmed. So yeah, accurate. Still, I had to be careful. That incredibly brittle plastic caused me a lot of grief as the plastic legs snapped several times while I was modifying. This is something that would continue to haunt me throughout this project, and I'll tell you about that in a future video. Aside from these sub-assemblies and the self-imposed detailing I undertook, there isn't a lot of construction required in this kit. In the next episode of this vintage build series, I'm going to finish up basic construction, and I'm going to find out that this model is not going to go together as smoothly as I'd hoped. Did you ever build Ravel's Dune Ornithopter? Or is it still sitting in your stash? What was your experience? Are you still trying to track one down? Comment below, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Don't forget to check out my other videos on Ravel's Ornithopter, and if you enjoyed this video, click that like button, and while you're at it, click subscribe and the notification bell too, so you never miss a single video. You've been watching Scale Icons, and I'll see you soon at the workbench.